Here's an area of mechanics we're going to talk about, static equilibrium. That is when you have an extended object, and by that I just mean not a point mass, but you know, an object that is not moving. So we're talking about really easy kinematics here. What does that mean? If it's not moving, then it's not accelerating. It's not accelerating. What does that mean? Well, if it's not accelerating, then the sum of the net, or the sum of the forces must be zero. So no net external force. And in addition to not translating with acceleration, it's also not, it has no angular acceleration. If it's static, right, it's not moving. So, and no net external torque. So really, these problems are about finding what tensions and forces are created, or do you need to hold this thing static, like a bridge, right, if we want the bridge to actually work. So a pretty standard first problem on this is to have the case of um, a wall, and you've got a rod like holding a sign or something, and the rod is attached to the building right there. And so it doesn't have to have a huge torque right here ripping bricks out of the building. You've got a cable, something like that. All right, so the cable is attached to the building. The cable is under some tension. It's at an angle theta. And you may want to say, well, if I want to have this at 30 degrees and this weighs so much, how much tension does the cable have to withstand? That would be an important thing to know. And then you know what kind of material you have to use. Let's see. So if we want to look at this, let's define a coordinate system here. Let's make it x. Oh my god x in that direction, y in that direction, so z would be out of the board, right, x, y, z. And it feels like an embarrassment of riches here, because we have six equations. Right off the bat, in any kinematics, or any uh, static equilibrium problem, six equations to play with. You have the sum of the external forces in the x equals zero. You have the sum of the external forces in the y equals zero. You have the sum of the external forces in the z equals zero. And you have the sum of the external torques in the around the x-axis equals zero. And you have the sum of the external torques around the y-axis equals zero. And you have the sum of the external torques around the z-axis equals zero. How could you possibly go wrong with that many equations? You could have six unknowns and still solve the problem. And you say, well, I thought we had to pick one axis. Well, remember, you pick a point and you rotate on that point, and typically you pick an axis also, but really you could think about, once you say, say we're going to think about the axis, this bar around this axis, you could say, well, that's z, but it could also rotate around y and x. So really you have all three of those. But, that sounds exciting to have six, but in most problems, you, have, you use, I'll say, three. Because most problems are really thinking about the forces in a plane and the rotation around an axis perpendicular to that plane. That's what we're usually limited to. So usually we're limited to um, two forces and one torque. Let I me mean, not use the cross product symbol. Two force and one uh, torque, like that. In this case, the torques would be around the z-axis and the forces would be all the x and y components of the forces. So this is how you set it up. So then what are the problems even about? Right? So you have unknowns and a bunch of forces. What are you usually doing? You're usually um, finding Fs, tensions, right? And you usually have to use, or often have to think about at least, the center of mass, or the center of gravity in this case. They're kind of in the same position. And also you have to think about friction. These problems are often, often, uh, about friction forces, and do you have enough friction to keep the ladder from falling down, et cetera. So we're going to do uh, a couple of these just to give you an idea of how they work. 